So with COVID-19 numbers continuing to rise in the country, is a localized lockdown an option? Business is in support of this on condition that economic activity remain as normal as possible. To discuss this more, I'm joined by Stavros Nikolaou from Business for South Africa. He's also an executive at Aspen Pharmacare. Thanks for your time, Stavros. Appreciate it. So, of course, there is talk of localized lockdowns. How would you feel about that? Firstly, uh, good afternoon to all the viewers, and thanks very much for having me. Um, look, business has always uh, taken a view that we need to balance, find the fine balance between lives and livelihoods. And as the pandemic has progressed over, over the months and we, we understand it a little better, and we also understand how to confine and localize our responses, um, we are able to, and I think this is the position that business supports, we, we are able to keep large parts of the economy open, which is important from a livelihoods perspective, but we're also able to better localize the problems and the hotspots in particular. And this is exactly what uh, the, pre the, the announcements were today. They're consistent with what business has been advocating um, for many months now, that we're in a better position to start localizing hotspots and therefore not shut down the economy and not impact vast parts of the economy. So I think we are supportive, I would believe, yeah. of managing new hotspots. But local economies, of course, will suffer, and that's where ordinary South Africans are going to be most affected. This will ultimately again see big business, which is your grocery stores, etc., thriving, but local businesses still struggling. Look, man managing hotspots um, also means that well-established protocols that exist, um, so things like wearing masks and social distancing and, and those other uh, basic protocols which are highly effective, um, it doesn't detract from the implementation, ongoing implementation of those. And I think if those are managed, you can turn hotspots around quite quickly and you can also continue a degree of trade. Obviously, there's going to be some impact, but you've got to weigh up the short-term impacts versus much longer-term devastation if you have to then start shutting down vast parts of the country. So managing hotspots also means you know, respecting the basic protocols that are in place that are highly effective. Mm -hmm. By way of example, if people are unmasked in a confined area for around four hours and there's six people sitting in the same room, you're likely to get four of those six people contracting the, the, the virus. So managing basic protocols in these hotspots will allow some economic activity to continue and will prevent much bigger shutdowns, which will be more impactful and devastating for the economy. Yeah. So I know that you've probably seen the reports from News24 about possible stricter restrictions for the entire country. And they are basically reporting that we'll see a curfew being put into effect at 10, restaurants having to close earlier, etc. You already have organizations like the Restaurant Association saying they'll go to court to challenge that move if it does happen because they say they simply can't stay afloat if there's another lockdown. Uh, look, obviously, we, we've, uh, we've seen and read these uh, reports today. They, they, they're not official, and this is what I was alluding to earlier. Um, I, I think, again, through managing on a localized basis, um, preventing massive lockdowns and having both clear rules and the respecting the basic protocols is an effective way of not shutting down large parts of the economy, not shutting down even areas um, that might become hotspots. So if you catch these areas in advance, then you're able to prevent much bigger interventions. But for us, I think we need to keep as much of the economy open as we can. We need to deal with localized situations and circumstances and we need to keep as much of the economy ticking over as we can. And lastly, I think we need to be rid of uh, a malaise and complacency, I think, which is understandable because people are fatigued. This has been going on for nine months now, so it's understandable. It's human behavior. But I think as business, we'd like to start sending out a, a much stronger message saying that, look, the real game changer here is going to be when you have a safe and effective vaccine um, administered to the appropriate parts of the population. Now, 
best estimates, and of course we never have to stick to these initial estimates, would be that we, we, we're looking at about a six to seven month time frame. Mm. And as a consequence, we need to be vigilant for another six or seven months, I believe. So we need to keep repeating these messages of respecting social distances, ma masking when we need to, and hand sanitization, very important. And we, we passed most of the worst of it. We've got about six or seven months, I think, before we start vaccinating. We yeah. need to be vigilant around that, I believe. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Appreciate it. That was Stavros Nikolaou, a board member at Business for South Africa.